Yellowstone Volcano in northwestern Wyoming. USGS pinpoints the next super eruption date amid overdue concerns. It's one of the over 20 super volcanoes of the world. It's basically in the subduction zone of western United States, the Pacific Plate plunging under the North American Plate. And this is the location of it. It has a lake over the caldera, and the USGS geologists have told us even a strong wind creating waves in the Yellowstone Lake region could cause a, uh, an earthquake in the supervolcano area because of the fact that the magma chamber is so big. It doesn't act like a regular volcano because of the size. Here you have the blue, the blue bubble is the size of one of the Yellowstone super eruptions. Now we know that the magma that goes into Yellowstone comes from the Baja California area. It, sh it splits into a Y. The western area goes under the uh, uh, Long Valley Caldera, which is another super volcano about 600 miles southwest of Yellowstone. And this is one of the ash, uh, the ash deposits of Yellowstone. You can see how Huge it is, it has formed mountains. This is the caldera in the northwest section of Wyoming, and you can see that black area there is the uh, Maple Creek earthquake areas. This is a uh, map of the Yellowstone caldera with the lake, and you can see even though it has a depression, this is where the caldera is. And again, the Baja California plume going from Baja all the way through Salt Lake City, Utah, into Wyoming, as you can see there. The magma is even under Idaho, as you can see the red plume there. The geologist in charge of Yellowstone is Mike Poland, and let's see what he has to say about the next super eruption. Please support my Patreon channel, since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. My Patreon channel will have five different videos from my YouTube channel every day. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Yellowstone Volcano scientist Mike Poland has pinpointed the date for a potential future super eruption after addressing claims that it is overdue. One of the scientists, Dr. Michio Kaku, says it's uh, Godzilla sleeping, and uh, once it erupts and it's overdue, he says. But anyway, let's see what Mike Poland has to say about that. The caldera said inside Yellowstone National Park spreads over the states of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana, and poses a significant threat in the event of a super eruption. The system is constantly monitored by USGS for any changes, despite such an event not occurring in more than uh, 640,000 years, even though in the past, the last uh, eruption was about a lava eruption 70,000 years ago, and we've had 80 eruptions since then. Now, but they were not super eruptions. Here we're talking about super eruptions. Over the years, there have been many unsupported claims that the super volcano is overdue an eruption after the average time between each event was calculated. But the scientist in charge of Yellowstone Volcano Observatory, Dr. Mike Poland, sought to put an end to that in the USGS recent update on their uh, YouTube channel. He said, I thought I'd start out this month's update by talking about one of the most common misconceptions about Yellowstone, and that is a big explosive eruption Yellowstone is overdue. That isn't true, and there are two reasons why this is the case, he says. The volcanoes erupt when there is a sufficient supply of eruptible magma beneath the surface and enough pressure to get that magma up to the surface. Right now, he says, neither of those conditions exist at Yellowstone. Dr. Poland went on to detail how the hotspot may even be in a state of decline. He said the magma chamber beneath Yellowstone is only about 5 to 15 percent molten, so it does not have enough magma to generate one of those big explosions. Over the last 15,000 years or so, since the last ice age, we know from the geology of Yellowstone Lake that Yellowstone has mostly gone down. 
He says, in fact, it's gone down by a net of 30 meters. That's about 90 feet to 100 feet, almost 100 feet, he says, over that time period. So there's no pressure that there's really no magma to feed one of these really big explosions. Even if Yellowstone, he says, did erupt on a schedule, the math still doesn't work out. Dr. Polo went on to discuss the numbers put forward before detailing his own calculations. He said, now occasionally you'll hear that there are 600,000 years or so between Yellowstone eruptions. He means super eruptions. The last one was 631,000 years ago. Well, the last part of that's the only part of that's true. 631,000 years ago, Yellowstone caldera formed, but before that was the Henry Forks caldera. And he shows maps here showing that. He says that was about 1.3 million years ago. And before that was uh, the Huckleberry Ridge caldera 2.1 million years ago. Again, he's talking about super eruptions. So he says, if you look at the time period between those, the average eruption interval between these explosions is actually 725,000 years or so, which means that actually we have another 100,000 years or so to go. Well, still, you know, taking that into account, we have no way of stopping such a thing. He says, but the expert admitted uh, even the number may not be correct, adding that there could never be another super eruption. He says, if you go further back in time, there were even longer time periods. And if you talk about the really big explosion, Henry Forks was actually not a super eruption. So if you only look at the super eruptions, it actually looks like the time between eruptions is getting longer. And this may be because the Yellowstone hotspot is encountering thicker and thicker continental crust. It's basically, he says, harder to burn through the crust from beneath. So it may be that we won't see near as many or perhaps any of these big explosive eruptions in the future, he says. This is by Callum Hoare on Express UK. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.